What up, my crush? It's me, Fresh, and welcome to Dudley's Pokino How. Yep, uh, Dudley suggested I react to another one of these. In particular, How I'd End Ash's Journey, Part 1. So, I guess we'll talk about how Ash's journey might come to an end. So, yeah, the title says it all. It's been a w quite a while since you've seen me react to one of these, so... Let's not waste any more time, shall we? Let's get into it. Make sure the volume's up. Yes. Thank you, Ducky. If you would like to leave a question for me to answer in an upcoming episode, then feel free. This gives me more content to discuss as well as making the community bigger. Yep. A personal discussion. Welcome to episode 44 of Dudley's Pokey Know How. As discussed in the last episode, Ash's journey is coming to an end. And mm -hmm. before that happens, I wanted to share my own version of how I might end Ash's journey mm -hmm. if it were up to me. Just a fun fan fiction. Okay. Part one of this will be in this video, and part two will be in the next episode. Right. Now, this video was actually planned out a good while ago, during the year I took away from YouTube. I thought of the story of how I'd end the anime, and wrote it out on the 17th of March, 2022. I hmm. worked on the Fresh vs. Snake Star series during that time, and funnily enough, the ending of Ash's journey was announced. As soon as I saw this, I worked hard to finish that FBS chapter, hmm. so that I could get these videos of Pokemon Know How out ASAP. Yeah. I wanted to share my version before Ash's journey actually did end, and see if anything I included in mine would actually happen during the finale to his story. Okay. Now that the end has been announced, I wanted to get my idea on YouTube quickly. If I released this video after Ash's journey ended, yes, it could still be entertaining, but people could potentially say I stole ideas from it if any of my plot points were actually used in the canon version. Okay. Now, before I start this fanfiction ending, I want to quickly point out that obviously it's not going to be perfect. There are things that could be worked on here and there, and certain scenes would have more screen time dedicated to them, yada yada yada. Consider this just one anime ending that I'd enjoy seeing. With that said, let's go into how I might end Ash's journey if it were up to me. Okay. It's night, and we cut to a secluded island at sea. Sleeping in the nest here is a ho -oh. As we watch it, it lets off the occasional glow, and all of its feathers light up. Mm -hmm. We pan up to the sky, and a fleet of blimps rolls into sight bearing the Team Rocket emblem. Oh. At the center of the fleet is a helicopter. It's Giovanni. Long have I searched, he says. Now, I imagine the scene would give some exposition about this particular ho mm -hmm. being the counterpart in strength to the Lugia we saw in Pokemon 2000. Right. Giovanni has timed this operation, knowing that the ho was going to begin a long flight at dawn. Giovanni informs his grunts that it's time to move in. Before ho can wake up, Team Rocket move in and capture it in its sleep with electrical nets. All right. Asset acquired returning to Kanto headquarters. The title screen then comes up for what is going to be a movie or a long TV special finale. We cut to Professor Oak's grounds and Ash is preparing for a party. Mm -hmm. He has all of his Pokemon helping as well as Mr. Mime, Tracy and Professor Oak. Okay. Now this is funny because my original script said Ash has just returned from presumably beating a league, but now I guess we can say it's the Masters Tournament, or he's taking a well-deserved break after accomplishing so much on his journey. Mm. For the party, he has invited all of his traveling companions, all of wow. the main ones he traveled with through the regions. He's also timed this That's party specifically so that Cynthia would be free to come as well. We mm. see some stills with some of them holding their invitations and traveling to get to Pallet. So far, Ash has Silen there, who's assisting with the food, yeah. and Clement. Bonnie is with Ash's mum, helping her with preparations at Ash's house. Hmm. We see Sophocles arrive, and they all greet each other. Now, as this is the finale to the anime, I think that it would be Brock's not that cooking yet. <laughs> already in the opening scene. So they're not here, just yet. While everyone happily prepares tables and food, Jesse, James, and Meowth are slowly hovering towards the group in their blue. They're annoyed about all the stress and strife they've been through to capture Ash's Pikachu, but are confident that today they can finally pull it off. Mm. They've also heard tell that Giovanni is on his way back to the Kanto headquarters from a recent undertaking. They see it as an opportune time to present Pikachu to him while they are there. Mm. The trio springs into action. They speak on their megaphone and do the motto. Maybe the original because they feel Kanto is their home turf, 
Or maybe there okay. could be a funny scene of them deciding which motto to do. <laughs> As they say the motto, they drop a couple of small explosives that make a mess of the party, scattering the food and tables. Mm. They tell Ash that today is the day they'll finally get Pikachu. Ash shouts a comeback and all of the Pokemon go into a fighting stance. The trio mm. warn them not to act so fast. Team Rocket tells them that while everyone was busy, they managed to sneak explosives into the Pokemon storage room of Oak's lab. Jeez. Everyone goes into despair and panics. Meowth says that he has the trigger, and unless they want him to push the button, Pikachu should surrender himself to Jeez, the a hostage Everyone situation. Displays their shock. Ash is in an angry and nervous There's state a bomb. of silence, but Pikachu realizes what he must do, and tells the trio that he'll come quietly. Meowth translates this while it happens. Mm. Pikachu, Ash says, running to his buddy. He understands Pikachu has to go and trust him with his decision. He hugs Pikachu sadly, and Pikachu embraces Ash, knowing what he's signing himself up for. Mm. Enough with the hugs, the trio say. They've been waiting long enough and just want Pikachu now. They lower a glass canister that can hold Pikachu, which has a light on top to show it absorbs his electrical attacks. Mm. Pikachu steps in and allows it to close around him. He is then lifted high into the air. Then the trio raises the balloon really high into the air out of range of any potential attacks. Pikachu or Ash would then say, right, now disarm the bombs or something. The group grin and say, as you wish, in unison. Meowth squeezes the trigger. Turns out it was just for a confetti shooter on the balloon that maybe sets off fireworks, mm. spelling out something like, glumtwerps or dumtwerps, or maybe <laughs> even having Pikachu-shaped explosions. Yeah. This angers everyone down below. Pikachu starts banging the glass with his fists angrily. Then the trio let off a huge smoke screen and disappear into the sky so that they can't be followed. Mm. Everyone is torn up, but Clement looks smug. Luckily, I've been preparing a device for an occasion just That like will this. blow up, he says he I guarantee it. Pikachu's fur ages ago, and he's made a device that can track Ash's Pikachu specifically. Before he starts it, Sophocles stops him, saying that he'll make an adjustment, otherwise it will blow up. Clement is stuck, <laughs> nice. really happy that Sophocles has fixed the issue. Clement activates the tracker, and they get a signal. Ash grabs a few of his Pokemon, and he, Sophocles, and Clement go after Team Rocket. Silence stays behind with Tracy and Professor Rogue to help tidy things up, and to let other people know what happened if anyone shows up. Mm. We then cut to a different scene. Giovanni is in his office talking to his secretary. Then the Team Rocket trio enters the room with Pikachu in hand, still mm. encased in the carryable glass case. Ah, it's you three, Giovanni says. Report. Sir, we finally brought you the Pikachu we've been telling you about. Giovanni steps out from behind his desk, looks at Pikachu, and actually smiles. Ah, this is the Pikachu that foiled my plans in Univer, the one that belonged to that young boy. Sir, the group say in unison. Good work, Giovanni says. He looks at Pikachu. I've been looking forward to seeing you again. Pikachu gives him an angry but nervous look. Giovanni looks at the trio again. Quite by chance, you have arrived just as I'm about to begin Team Rocket's greatest undertaking. Giovanni explains that he has recently acquired Ho-Oh. When it changes mm. form and becomes Life-Age Ho-Oh and flies across the globe, its feathers become life feathers and spread a sparkling energy across the world that energizes every Pokemon species. Mm. By harnessing the life feathers power, he can use the energy to mesmerize every Pokemon in the world, no matter what size and shape, including deity Pokemon. He has scientists working on a device that will allow him to do this, and it will be in working order very soon. Giovanni looks at Pikachu again. He says he's happy that he has the opportunity to see this Pikachu that fools his plans in Univer, while on the precipice of taking over the world again. Mm. Giovanni's Persian goes up to the glass and growls at Pikachu, smiling and looking sinisterly at him. Pikachu mm. looks frightened and a bit angry. The trio are stood in awe, happy that the organization is finally going to take control of the world. The trio explain to Giovanni that they're happy to finally present Pikachu to him, and that Pikachu will be a great Pokemon to help serve Team Rocket. Mm. Indeed, Giovanni says. This Pikachu's power is to be analyzed. Take Pikachu down to Dr. Zega's lab. It will give Zega something to run experiments on while he waits for the results of the Life Age emitter. James mm. and Meowth stop smiling and look at each other questioningly, while Jesse seems unfazed. Sir, Jesse says. We'll take it down there right away. As the trio leave the room, Giovanni tells them to get ready to capture the Pokemon they've always wanted to own, because they'll all be here soon. Mm. Giovanni sits at his desk again, petting Persian. He looks at his secretary. Not long now, he says to her. 
Putting yeah. outside, Asher and the others have made it to the base of the Team Rocket Fortress. They notice the presence of many Team Rocket grunts. Clement sends a message to Bonnie's wristwatch telling her where the base is and to contact Officer General about it, mm. while explaining this to Asher and Sophocles. Okay. Through the means of Clement and Sophocles' intelligence with technology, they manage to sneak into the base unnoticed, hacking systems and making openings as they go. Mm. Meanwhile, the Team Rocket trio walk down a dimly lit hallway with many doors. They are at the lower levels of the labs. It's eerily quiet down here. Mm -hmm. Pikachu 2 is looking nervous. Meowth says, I know we've never been down here before, but the labs always gave me the creeps. James and Meowth speak up and question Jesse on why they'd be taking Pikachu 2 to Zelda's lab. They remember working with him and some of the things they helped him do in Unibrow. Jesse says that they probably just want to see how powerful Pikachu 2's electricity is and that the syndicate needs to see his strength. This mm. reassures James and Meowth. As they approach the doorway to Zega's lab, the trio are suddenly shook. Stood guarding the door are six rocket grunts, being led by none other than 009 Domino. Oh. Domino seems confused at their shocked okay. expressions. She nods to them respectfully. Dr. Zega is waiting for you inside. The trio recall that she doesn't remember who they are, and thank her for letting them through with nervous expressions. Mm. Domino raises an eyebrow, confused at the interaction. The trio pass the rocket grunts at the door and enter the lab. Zega is the only one in there and turns around. Ah, I was told you three would be heading my way. He looks at Pikachu. And we have big plans for you, he says sinisterly. We see Zega strap Pikachu to a metal table with his body stretched out. He has Ooh. devices on Pikachu's cheeks to prevent him from electrocuting anybody. And his tail has been restrained, so Ugh. he can't use Iron Tail either. Okay. Pikachu looks really nervous. He looks at the trio and they look at him curiously. Now we are ready to begin, Zega says. The trio smile. Their dreams have finally come true. So what sort of experiments are you going to perform to test Pikachu's electrical power, Doctor? James asks. Zega responds. This Pikachu has displayed phenomenal power not found in your everyday Pikachu. I'm going to run tests to see how it is able to produce such power. Right. And to do that, it will need to be dissected. Dise the trio stops smiling and dissected? They all turn to look at Zega. James and Meowth look surprised. Jesus Jessica Christ. Smiles with her eyes closed. Um, dissected? She asks. Indeed, to see how this Pokemon produces its incredible power, we must analyze every fiber of its being. She turns to look at Pikachu and smiles sinisterly. But don't worry, my friend. This will make it painless while you sleep. And he approaches Pikachu. No! With a Pikachu looks terrified. He yells, Pikachu! Ash in his language. Wow. End of part one. Sheesh. What kind of cliffhanger is that? Good God. Ugh. Welcome to the Giving Back to You segment. Which I'm immediately skipping. Sorry. Welcome to the newest segment of Pokedex entries. And today yes. we're talking about Gloom. Yep. Now, last time we talked about Oddish, and Oddish had a lot of, like, lore explained to us in the Pokedex entries. Yeah. Are uh, oddy and wondrous, oh my god. My predictions about Gloom is probably just going to be talking about more of how it uses poison, like spores and stuff, to do things. Mm. Or... I don't remember what that's about it, really. I don't know what else to say about it. So, let's see what the Pokedex entries say. You know, I was actually going to say it might talk about the drool that it has coming out of its mouth. Mm. And I know I wish I had, because most of the Pokedex entries talk about it. They say it's used to attract prey with, like, it's, like, the smell does. But there's a lot of Pokedex entries that contradict it and say that it smells awful. Obviously, um, Gloom, Vileplume, etc. are, um, based on a, a... What's it called? Hang on a minute. The corpse flower. Yeah, a Rafflesia plant. That's what I call it. Rafflesia. Um, it's basically a plant that attracts prey with a really foul-smelling, well, scent. Um, there's other ones interesting... That are interesting though. Um, if I can just find it. Yeah, rubies, for instance. It says, um, Gloom releases a foul fragrance from the pistol of its flower. And it basically says when the Pokemon's calm, it doesn't really release the smell. Which is interesting because they say that in the uh, Pokemon episode that was in the original series. So I wonder if they based it on that. The hmm. one that I found most interesting is emeralds. A horribly noxious honey draws from its mouth. One whiff of the honey can result in memory loss. Memory so loss. That's kind of interesting and dark and <laughs> stupid plant. 
Anyway, yeah. <laughs> uh, that basically covers glue. Hmm. Well, that's the end of fan fiction. <laughs> well, that's the end of episode forty-four. See you next time for fan fiction part two. Nice. Well, that was dark. I mean, sheesh, what a way to bring the franchise to a close. I mean, there's one way of doing it. That wouldn't have been my first, but you're the expert here, not me. Well, most of the time, anyway. Well, until the next part, I guess that's it for now, guys. So, until next time, stay fresh.